So if you want to make strides forward in your practice sessions rather than just spinning your wheels, then this may be the video for you. This came from a discussion I was having with someone on Twitter about uh, what she could do to improve her practice sessions to get more out of them. And it got me thinking about the kinds of things that I've done over the years to really try and push myself forward. So the, these are the kinds of approaches that I've taken. Now the approaches I'm going to talk about are really focused on building your technique specifically. But these are kind of general purpose approaches as well, so you should be able to apply them irrespective of the thing that you're working on. So the first thing to have is a clear goal. What are you trying to achieve? Now I try to think about a week ahead. That's the kind of range that I tend to work with and every week I kind of reassess where am I, what have I, what have I achieved over the last week, what do I want to achieve over the next week and how am I going to go about doing that. And you can have multiple goals, it doesn't just have to be one thing and it could be sort of a, a few technique goals, it could be a few songs you want to learn, it could be some musical theory as well. But you need to think about what are you wanting to achieve and what kinds of things can you do in order to achieve that. And once you're there, that's a great place to start planning out your practice sessions. So my ideal day has more than one practice session in it. And, and what I've found over the years that is the, one of the most important sessions is the very first session of the day. And what I really like to do when I can is to get up early. I, and I do this before I've even got dressed. I'll put the coffee on and then I'll pick my guitar up and I'll start playing and I'll just sort of warm up my playing just first thing in the morning. And it doesn't have to be a long session, just say 15 minutes or something. And even if I do that before I go to work, for example, I find that that sets me up for the whole day. Um, and it's almost like the difference between a really good day and a really bad day. I found if I've warmed up, if I've had this first session in the morning, that really does set me up and I have many more good days when I do that than I have bad days. And then throughout the day, if you can, I do tend to have one big session, one mega session, but if I can add a few others as well through that day, those can really make the difference. But that first session of the day, for me, seems to be a really powerful thing to add. The next thing to focus on is making efficient use of your time. And these days, that means switching off social media, turning off your phone, getting rid of that, turning off your PC or your iPad, and just focusing on playing the guitar for a period of time. Unless, obviously, you're watching one of my videos, in which case, you know, binge watch the whole channel. But that to one side, I find that if I, if I switch off social media, if I detach myself from all of that, for a period of time and I just focus on playing, then I make my biggest improvements. And the other, the other part of this is, is really focusing on playing as well, being more mindful of your playing as well. So think about your playing as you're playing it. And, and as your mind drifts off, as it is apt to do when you're doing any kind of focused exercise, you start thinking about what you're going to do later on in that day or what you're going to do tomorrow, you're thinking about your problems and stuff like that. When you catch yourself doing that, pull your mind back to the task at hand and just keep doing that. Just keep the focus on the task at hand. Just catch yourself and bring yourself back to it. And you find that that's really helpful in your playing as well. But it's also good for your mental health. It's, it's one of the fundamental techniques in meditation. So it's a really powerful thing to be able to do anyway. Also, even, even in the big sessions that I do, and I'll do, you know, three, four, five hours sometimes, take breaks. You know, when you're working on a technique, when you're, working, when you're drilling on something, I tend to only work on it for maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that, and then I'll take a break from it, and then I'll come back and pick it up again and do another, do another session like that. The important thing really is, you know, some of these can be really quite hard on your hands, they can be hard on your tendons and things like that. You don't want to feel any pain. Now you're going to feel, depending on the exercise that you're working on, you're going to feel like you're working out. But there's a difference between that kind of warm feeling of, you know, your hands doing what they're supposed to do and you pushing the envelope versus real pain. You don't want to ever feel real pain. 
We don't want to be developing tendonitis when we're doing this kind of thing. Now there's a, a study technique that kind of encapsulates all of this that I found really quite useful and it's called the Pomodoro technique and I've talked about this in previous videos so I'll not dwell on it but I'll put a link in here if you want to research it yourself. But the basic concept is this, you take a task, you take something you want to achieve, you split it up into a series of 15 or 20 minute sessions, you set a timer so for that 15 or 20 minute session and then during the course of that you just focus on that one task and then after your session finishes you take a five minute break and then you come back, reassess what you've done and you start the next session and everything is a series of sessions like this driven by a timer and after maybe four or five sessions you take a much longer break. So that's pretty much summarizes what the Pomodoro technique is. It's really useful, it's really useful in academic study as well. It's great for us guitar players, it's great for technique development because it has that, that concept of focused effort and then taking a break uh, and splitting your session up. So I find that really powerful. So another thing I've found really useful over the years, almost by accident, is a concept of deliberate variance. And, and what I discovered was this, when I was working on a specific technique, a specific lick or a specific idea, yes, I could drill that, I could focus on that and I could play on it for you know a few hours or something and really get the speed of really develop that technique. But what I also found was that that technique was really fragile. I found that unless I was in exactly that same zone, playing exactly that same phrase in that same context, then I'd start making mistakes. Whereas if I started introducing some variance in my practice, so I, I played a similar idea or was playing around with a class of ideas that used a similar technique, and then I developed that and I evolved that over time, what that did was give me a much broader range of skills around that same area. So when it came to me actually using it in a gig or in a, in a solo or something, I had enough resilience, I had enough sort of breadth of, of skills around that area to be able to use it without making a mistake. And that's really what I'm talking about when, when, I, when I talk about use deliberate variance. So what does that mean? That means, let's say you're working on a, a phrase like descending or ascending four, something really simple like that. So what I would do is I would play it in one position on the next neck and I'd work on that and then I'd play it in the next position and then I'd play it in the next position and then I'd play it in the next position. So that same concept is being used over and over again in a slightly different way. The other thing I would do is it's very easy with a phrase like that to just cycle it and play it over and over again and just play it like that for 15 to 20 minutes. So rather than doing that, I'd play the phase for maybe 10 seconds and then I'd stop and then 10 seconds and stop and deliberately stop and start and stop and start. Again, varying what I'm doing, varying how I'm approaching it, but it's still the same idea. Now what you'll find is progress feels slow, especially in the early days when you're doing this. But actually, objectively, you find that you're improving much more quickly than you would be if you were just drilling one shape over and over again. And there, there are a few scientific papers that, that back this concept up. It's, it's not just something that I've, I've discovered by accident over the years. It's something that has been researched as well. And I'll put a link in the video below just, just for you to read around this as well. Now, no one of these ideas is really going to sort of revolutionise your playing unless maybe you're a social media addict and you suddenly realise that you, you really can improve if you're not focused on other things, you're focused on your playing. But generally, we're talking about marginal gains. If you make marginal gains, make marginal improvements, you improve what I like to call the density of your practice. You're getting more out of each practice session and you do that on a daily basis, you find that you start to build momentum in, in your practice and in your improvements and you start making those strides ahead. And that's, that's when things get really fun. Now there is a 
flip side to this as well, and that's as, as human beings, we tend not to develop linearly. And what that means is if you put one hour of work in and you, you achieve a certain level of gains, if you put two hours of work in, you don't need to achieve twice that. And actually what can happen is you feel like you plateau sometimes and you can feel like you're going backwards sometimes. But also equally, you can sometimes feel like you're making huge leaps forward. It's, it's really weird. But the more you do these kinds of exercises, the more, the more you introduce these kinds of approaches to your practice sessions, the more you'll find you're making these big strides forward as well. So it's worth persevering is worth thinking about whether there are any roadblocks in your in your practice what could be holding you back but if there are no obvious things holding you back then persevere with what you're doing keep pushing forward and you may find you just need a little bit of time to break through that plateau so stick with it have good luck have fun with it and we'll chat next time goodbye